Welcome everyone to my channel. Today is going to be a fun one. In this video tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to create animated video using AI. You don't want to miss this. So, how do we get started with this animation process? First, we need a video source. There's basically three different options that you can do for the video source. You can borrow a video that someone else made and stylize it. Or you can create your own video. And then you stylize it. Here's another example, and then you can stylize it once more. These are all models that I've created. This is a Doctor Strange one. The other option is to use 3D models. So you have something like this, and then you stylize it something. You get something like this. And here's one more example. Well, I have the flash here, and I'm going to stylize and turn them into Spider-Man. What we're going to do is we're going to have a video, and we want to animate this so that it looks something like this. We're going to animate our original video. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to have to split it up into images, into an image sequence. And then we're going to feed each individual image into our stable diffusion. And then it's going to animate each image like this. And then we're going to take all of these new images and we're going to have to put them back into as a video. Make sense? So we're here in Stable Diffusion. And here's an example of what you can do with your models. It can change your reference image to whatever style you train it in. So for example, here, I train uh, my model to do Spider-Man and Spider-Verse style. So you can do some pretty cool things. So you get the idea of how it uses my reference image. Here's an example of the 3D model from Mixmo that we took. And we're stylizing it. There we go, that looks pretty cool. All right, let's do this. Let's convert a video into image sequence. So left corner, click here, scroll down to video sequence. Now on the bottom banner under modeling, click add, find movie, locate where your video file is and click on the video and then add movie strip. Now go to uh, output properties on the right side you see here there's like a printer kind of looking thing and check the properties of your video so over here double check 60 frames per second I need to change my resolution 1280 720 let's look at the frame range here it says uh, 425 
So I need to click end. 425. Oops. 425. Uh, you should be able to, if you see, I'm doing click and drag and create another window. There is, if you want to double check how how long your video is, scroll to the end. And now you see on the bottom here, it says 425, 426, 425. Alrighty, so let's fix that again. 425. Now let's go to output and we are going to have to create an output folder, open my downloads, create new directory, give it a new name, come on quick, output face, accept. All right, so now we're ready to go render it. So on the top, click render, render animation. And now you're starting to see the output. And if I go to my file, Downloads, output face, and now I can see. The image sequence. Okay, and now we're going to be taking this, putting it to stable diffusion, and it's going to be rest using this as the base to restylize as a reference image for, for our new images. So we now we can see it's almost done. Great. So let's go to image to video now. All right, so we went to stable diffusion. We took our reference images and we stylized them. Correct. And now we need to take all these images and put them back into video. So we're going to go to Blender, and we're going to convert this image sequence to a video. It's almost the same steps as before. Click here, go down to Video Sequence. We're going to go back to Output Properties, type in back our resolution that we had, and frame rate is going to be 60 just like our original video. Then we're going to go to File Format, click M, uh, FF MPEG Video, go to Encoding, click Container, it says Matroska, we're going to move to MPEG 4. This is good video codec, we're going to change to High Quality. Now let's add our image sequence. We're going to click Add, then image sequence. We'll find the folder where all your images are. Click on an image and then click A and it should select all of them. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to end at 184 because it starts at 0. So 184. Add image strip. Okay, I'm going to edit at 184 here, and now we should be good to render a video. Okay, so now that we have all the settings, the last step is to find, uh, write down where our output folder is going to be. So we'll go to Downloads, Add New, and I'll say Video, output, paste, accept, nice. Now we go to render, and render animation. Let's go check it out. Video output, and there we go. Click. And that's how it's done. 
All right, now what we're going to do is I'll show you how to import a model and export it as an image sequence. Whoop. So if you go to Mixamo, log in, it's a free website. You can pick uh, different character costumes, trying to make it similar. I'm trying to get uh, Spider-Man, so I picked the mannequin. And then I'm going to do a punching scene. So, here's a combo that I like, so I'm going to download this file, SFBX, with the skin, choosing the frame rate of 30, and download. Then I'm going to go to Blender, open the file there, and export the video uh, as an image sequence. We'll delete the box. This right here is our camera. On the left side, I have the move option, so you just move around the arrows to change the camera on the right screen. You can click the viewport point, viewpoint, and move it around. And so we're going to import our file. It's FBX, so we to import FBX, find the file, import FBX, and there we go. So now we need to see what the camera sees. I'm going to click. You see where all these view ports are. I'm going to click here with the mouse and drag to the side. And then I'm going to click on this camera. So now I know I see what this camera on the left side sees. Okay, so let's move it around. I'm going to click here, the transform button. Click the camera. And we're going to get the angle that I want. If not, press spacebar. That's what we see. Maybe you want a little bit closer. Alright. I'm going to go to armature. I'm going to hide this. And now I want to be able to add maybe a green background. So I'm going to go add mesh play pull play around put it behind the object click move and I want to make it bigger. So I'll click the resize box until it covers the whole screen. There we go. I have to change the color. I want to go to shading. I'm probably going to click on new. Or click add color mix RPG. Now we'll add to the color to color base. Click on color more. Go to green. Click to color two. And there's going to be a green screen. Go back to layout. And it should be green if I click render image. Here we go. You see the green screen. Here we go. Yeah, you have to make sure to change your view ports to shading. Nice. You can also have different angles. You can move the camera around to something different. And now we're going to check our properties. 
set the frame rate to whatever you want to be. Our animation stops at a hundred frames, so we change that. Find the output file. I'll go to the downloads. Peggy directory. Perch. Image. Select. File format PNG. Head to export. We go to render. Click render animation. Light source is right over here. And we can move that light source around. Maybe it doesn't let me while it's rendering. There we go. It's going to affect what your image looks like. So if I go back to my demos. Now look and see. See, I moved the lights of surround. And there you could see at the right corner. As before, it was more up, up on top. And now we can take this and put it into our staple diffusion and reanimate it. Now, the stable diffusion that we're using is called Automatic 1111. You're either going to have to install it onto your computer if you have GPU. And if you're like me and don't have GPU because I'm running on my laptop, uh, you can use Run Diffusion where you can pay by the hour. And using the browser, you can uh, use their GPU. And I made all my animations using Run Diffusion. Now, you have the option of creating your own model, and I will show you how to do that using Dream Booth with photos that you've collected or images that you've created using AI like Midjourney. Or you can simply download a model through the website of uh, Civit AI. Once you have a model, we're going to have to either create a video or download a video that you're going to stylize. All right, so here are examples of training models I generated. And the question is, how do we get from my input image here to here? So we call this image to image. And we used a model I trained on Doctor Strange. Here are some other examples. You can see how it really follows and uses my image as a reference to stylize Doctor Strange, including my arms. So this is used with the help of using control net. Pretty cool. It's pretty versatile. I hear I use Tom Holland. This is closer. I also have Iron Man models and Spider Man models that I generated. And here you can see the prompt I used. How do we create or train a model to? take a picture of me and make it into Spider-Man. Well, I have to feed it images. For example, here, I have to feed it images of Iron Man. Here, I have to feed it images of Doctor Strange to train it, to take an image here and convert it here. 
So how do we do that? Well, we're about to collect images. It's better to put them against a green screen. You can do that in Canva. There's an option. If you're a paying member to remove the background, it'll probably do it automatically and they can give it whatever color you want. And this is just going to help make it <laughs> easier for you. And you want to make sure to get different angles and facial expressions for your character. Not only different angles, but different parts of the body. Torso, a full body image, ones where hands are shown. Okay, and then and then what you're gonna want to do is take all these and copy them into a folder and run diffusion. Just a heads up, before you sign up and you make any payments on Run Diffusion, make sure you go to my bio in my video and check out my coupon code VADI15 and click the link. It, this is an affiliate link. It's going to help me out. It's going to help you out. And enter my code and um, you're going to get a 15% disc off, 15% uh, off uh, the purchase that you make using Run Diffusion. And if you click the affiliate link, it'll take you to the website and you're going to help support me and using the discount code, code is going to help you out too. So it's just a win-win for both of us and we get to help help each other out. All right, so for example, we here SD SD user password login click here. I keep everything in a folder called Retro Superhero. So simply just create create a folder here. You see on the left it says new folder. You can even call it my model training name. And inside the folder, it's important to have two folders. One called training images and one called training reference. All right. Training images are the images that you created. So this example is Spider-Man. This one is Doctor Strange. This was Iron Man. Okay, so I've made a bunch of different ones at once with Venom. With Thor. I have ones where I create styles. So I generated these using Midjourney to train it to take an image and draw it in the style of this kind of 3D. I also have a style of Spider-Verse. So simply you just feed it a bunch of images of the style you wanted to copy. So you see you can do that with styles and with characters. All right, perfect. Now, if we look, what, how would you describe this image? This would be like buildings, right? Buildings, homes. Each image you can describe it somehow. This one, this group, all right? How would you categorize it? It's it's females or women. All right. So. It's important for every model that you create. For example, for Doctor Strange, it could be a wizard, it could be a sorcerer, but to keep it simple, man. So the category, the training reference, you're going to need to create folders called man, woman, sorcerer, 
female, something that describes the type of image that you're training. And when you're, when you're doing the training, Dream Booth is going to generate these training photos. And it's important you have to have these folders made. Yeah. The next part is where we talk about when you're doing the training, it's important to have the file location. So over here, you gotta notice it starts with dash mnt dash private. It you always you you have to have this, and the rest you just copy and paste. All right. So I have symbiote Spider Man. So I go here, and after files, I copy and paste. And that'll be my directory location for this. So he knows uh, to train this. And I'll simply paste it like that when I'm doing the training. Make sense? So write this down on a piece of paper so that you know when you give the instructions to where to find the training images. You want it to be like this, and then you just copy and paste the URL. All right, the next part is naming. You have to give it a specific unique name. So it's called token names. So for this one, I called it Black Spider-Man or Black Spider 91, and I took away all the vowels. So now you know this name is very specific, and it knows to call back to this these trained images. You don't you don't want to call it anything else that, for example, uh, Spider-Man because he it'll take take Spider-Man, but he has a red suit. We want to be specific to this style, which is Spider-Man with a black suit. So I have a unique name that can only be referenced to these images and not be confused to anything else. And then we're basically ready to start training the model. Once you've imported all the training images, and you've created the folders that are descriptive of the category, for, that are descriptive of the category for each image that you're uh, generating. For style, I basically use the folders called aesthetic. And let's get ready to generate and train a model. We would have to go to Run Diffusion. In order to done, so we're going to select up automatic about it out oh, click your hardware that you want to use. I'm going to use Stable Diffusion 1.5. Now you don't need to. You can sign up to Creative Club in order to have access to Dream Booth. Select a game. And you go to wait a little for it to load up. Okay, so we're all loaded up here. We have the file browser already. So you grab right here SD user and the password type in pass word. Okay, now I'm going to launch this in another, another window. So I'm going to click here, open my image gallery in a new tab. There we go. 
All right, so if you click here, there's going to be all the different models you have. So almost all of these are ones that I've made. If you want to import a model, and I'll show you file browser. And look, uh, if you want to import a pre-made model from, for example, Senate. AI. So we've got some models over here. Click this word. You want to make sure that you can use it on Stable Diffusion uh, version 1.5. You need to select the different versions. You see a clone here and download it. Once you've downloaded it, you go to your file browser, click the models. Version one, then you simply click and drag and then import it in here. So there's another way of importing models and run diffusion. And so what you can do is when you go to the models folder here, you scroll down and you're gonna click on this button, the one that looks like this, and it's gonna open up a terminal. And in the terminal fit window, you want to type in ARIA2C. And then you're going to uh, take the download link and paste it. And click enter, and it should download it for you. And then you can just go click the refresh button, and it should be in your models folder. All right, but we're going to generate our own models. But yeah, once, once you've imported it, you just want to refresh your tab. Once you put it, you want to refresh your tab. By clicking this button here. So once you've imported it, you want to refresh your tab by clicking this blue button over here. You should be able to find it in your list. But we're going to train our model, so we're going to need to go to train booth to once again, if you don't see Dream Booth, you probably forgot to access the Creative Club. Creative Club. Sub. Alright, so we're in Dream Booth. We click Spider-Verse. We select our source checkpoint to be a version 1.5. Click Create Model. And then we just have to wait a little bit. And no. And now we can see that our checkpoint is successfully created. So if we go to our models folder, we'll be able to see there's a folder called Spider-Verse. So now I'm gonna go down here at the set look at the settings. We're gonna leave the training steps and I'm gonna bring down everything else to zero. All right, we're at the settings, and I set everything to zero, but I keep the training steps at 100. And then we scroll down, I'll leave the learning rate, the learning rate scheduler, and we're gonna go down here and make sure we're set to FB16 and have X4 set. And there we're good to go. And there we're going to go to concepts. Now here we have the data set directory, the classification data set directory. Data set is the images that you've trained, that you're going to train on. And the classification is reference images. Okay, so we're going to go to settings. We're going to find our path to, to saving. And we're going to copy this directory, mnt-private. We'll go back to Dream Booth and paste it, all right? 
Then we're going to need to type in the location of the folder where we're going to where the images are that we're going to train on. So I have a folder here called training images and here I'm going to select this folder right here where we have we're training images of Spider-Man. So I'm going to copy the location and I'm pasting it here. Now we're going to look at our reference images. So we're going to have to go to our reference image training reference folder that we created. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the folder from man because that's most closely resembles Spider-Man. Here we go. We copy the address, paste it for our data set. So now it knows where to pull the images when the training is going on. Now we want to, we're going to our second concept. Okay. So this is going to be our style, which we're doing in the style of the spider verse. And we're going to take the reference location and then copy and paste it. Again, we need to have mnt-private in the beginning of it. And for our data set, we need the location where we have the photos in the style Spider-Verse. So Spider-Man 92, make sure Make sure you're picking, giving these uh, folders names that are different to any word because you want your name to be unique. So what I learned is uh, this from Quarter Cruise, basically take away all the vowels. That's why I have Spider-Man and I added some numbers in there so you can't mix up this keyword to anything. Yeah, I had to just paste the right directory name. Alrighty. So now for our instance token, this is the unique keyword that I told you about that is going to trigger a trained image when you, you're generating. We're going to have Spider-Man 91. SPDR and band. I'm um, actually 93. Class token will just be man. This one does not have to be a unique word. This is just a train uh, reference. And for instance, in class prompt, I just leave it. But then what I do here is this is really experimental. I don't know what I'm doing, but this is the settings I put for in the bottom 47.5, 41.7.5, and 40. Okay, let's move on to concept number two. So that's the style folder. So, for example, when I'm writing out of my prompt, it will be the keyword will be SPDRBS, short for Spider-Verse. Okay, so I filled in the all right, so I filled in the the keywords and because I'm trying to train a style here, 
I'm actually going to make it a smaller value to turn 7.5, 40, water, dirty. All right, so then once we have that, we're ready to train. So we click start train. And this window pops up and I just click OK. OK. And we just have to wait for it. And there we go. And it's starting to pre process our images. For some reason, something goes wrong. You can find the logs folder, click on it, and then click Auto 1111. And it's going to give you a log of what is happening. So scrolling down, and now you can see a log of the processes happening and the stage you're at. So congrats, uh, it finished. Now we're going to click this refresh button, this blue button, and we should have our model loaded up here. Click on it. It's loading up the checkpoint. And we're going to go to image to image and let's, we're going to test, we're going to test out how well our model works. So put an image of myself in here. And I already have some prompts that I wrote out. And here I wrote out some prompts that are already ready. And I'm going to click generate. Let's see what happens. That's cool. That looks definitely in the style of Spider-Verse. But it doesn't look like Spider-Man, which is what our model is trained to do. So something that I can do is turn down the denoising strength. And it should make the image look more like me, more like the original. That looks pretty cool. I have to play around with it more, and the lower the denoising de strength, the more it should look like me. I can also go to control net, play around with the preprocessors. Right here, I'm going to use open pose, and for the model, I'll use open pose also. You can play around with the weight and the guidance if you want. But and and here I'm going to use depth and depth open. Uh, depth v10 and I'll play around with the weight here this is all just experimentation and I'm going to click generate and let's see if it changes the results control net is really great when you're dealing with body when you have limbs like arms and legs Not so much with the face, but we can definitely see now it looks much more closer and similar to my original reference image that I'm feeding it. I think you could say this is a success. This definitely looks uh, in the style of Spider-Verse. 
and does look like it's using my reference photo. And what it is, I increase the sampling steps. All right, so let's start increasing the denoise strength. It should start looking more like Spider-Man as I start increasing it. Let's increase it some more, see what happens. So, I'm going to add the word Spider-Man to help it out a bit. Okay, there we go. But now we're having an issue where it has hair. My hair is confusing it. So I'm going to increase the denoising strength even more. It should be much closer to the prompt I wrote. Okay, but now we've got some blotches. So I'll increase, I'll decrease the, I'll increase the sampling steps. I'll increase the denoise strength. Maybe it will fix itself out. This is all about um, experimenting, playing around with the negative prompts, and playing with uh, just playing around with your prompts. Okay, this looks closer. Still, something looks looks a bit funky. Alright, so I'm going to try adding our, some other keywords like man. And that seems to have fixed the issue. Remember, uh, man was uh, another training keyword that we used and I'm now going to add the other keyword which was aesthetic call them tokens see if it helps reinforce the style even more Alrighty, so I took the image sequence we made before and I imported it here and I tested it out and I've cr uh, this is the prompt I'm using for the, one of the first models I've ever made and let's do an animation, generate our first animation. Once we did image to image, you can test out uh, we're using the same seed So let's take a different image, see how well it works. Looks pretty darn cool. Um, but I don't like what's happening in the back. Obviously, I can edit it out. But maybe type in hair and see if that removes it for the, in the negative part. See, so the hair is, my hair is messing it up. It's confusing it. Uh, so what I would have done and sometimes you see in some of the photos is I put a hat on because I've had this problem before. I, ha I put a hat on so it doesn't confuse uh, the image. But I think this is pretty amazing. All right, so I think it's ready to do a batch. So we're going to click batch and it's going to ask us for input directory. So we call the file me. 
And you don't need to create uh, an output folder. You can simply write the file name. And if you remember from before, We're going to need this as the intro to our directory. And it will automatically create this folder. We just need to name it. Our, um, all right. I think we're set. I played around with control net a little bit. I put an open pose. Then change the weight or the guidance, and then I put in depth. Played around with the weight and the guidance here. And, uh, yep, that's really, that's really it. And you click generate, it's going to take all these files and run through them. Um, oops, it might take a while because we're using control net. I've increased the sampling steps and I made the denoising strength to maximum. So I think that if affects its speed. So click generate and let it run. You see saying that it's going to take a, uh, about 15 minutes to run through. So I'll get back to you when it's done. All right, great. So we generated all the images. So let's head out to our output folder, refresh it. Great. So what we're going to do now is we want to download this image sequence and convert it back into a video output, just like we learned early on in the tutorial. So I'll download this and I'll join you back soon. All right, well, back to Blender, and let's finally put together the Im image sequence we just generated. We know the steps from last time. Go to Video Sequencer. We're over here. Frame rate. Well, for these settings, we're going to have to find our original video. Details. Frame rate is 60, and this is a ratio of 1280 by 720. 1280 by 720. Frame rate is 60. We're going to have to create an output folder. So I'll go to Downloads, and I'll make file animation spidey final animation perfect all right now let's import the sequence we'll go to add image sequence here we go and just click a select everything uh, start frame rate, 39, and then let's scroll down, 268, perfect, add, alrighty. So let's select our frame rate. We're ending at 230. So we're going to change the frame range. And everything is set. The last thing is to change the file format FFmpeg video. Remember to go to encoding, change Matroska to 
MPEG-4, high quality, and now we can go to render and render animation. And we're just going to let it run. All right, let's check the video. For animation, there's an MP4 video. And there we go. I think it's pretty cool. It looks 3D, which was my objective. And it's Spider-Man. Now, you see the flickering background? There is something we can do about this. If you want to remove the background and put something different, uh, you can generate you can generate uh, a background on its own. So one of the one of your options is is to go to runway. Okay, so I'm going to log in. And what we want to do is remove background. Oh, I guess I don't have my plan anymore. Well, if you want to pay, you have an option to go here, remove a background, and add something different. There's a different way where you can do it for free at vid.io. You can also use Photoshop. But I'm going to take the file. Add it here. We go. Okay, so we're importing here, and there's an option here to remove background. So let it run, and we can see. It's not perfect. You'll get better results if you actually pay using this. All right, so you get the idea. So guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, my tutorial on how to create AI animations. Um, I hope you found this tutorial useful. Um, and I hope you can create something really cool. If you do create something, leave it in the comments. And uh, I hope it's informative and fun and click and subscribe. Don't forget you can use my affiliate link and my discount code. And uh, until next time, see you guys.